Hi, my name's Josh. I play drums in a band called 21 Pilots, and you're watching Behind the Brand. <laughs> Hey everyone, I'm Brian Elliott. Welcome to another edition of Behind the Brand. Today I'm here with 21 Pilots, amazing drummer, Josh Dunn. Josh, welcome. Thank you. I usually ask my guests, how'd you get this job? Uh, there's two of us in my band, um, and I feel that the, the answer is pretty boring. Um, so, but I'll tell you the truth. I, I really just handed in my resume uh, to Tyler um, probably like 40 times and then he accepted it. That's not true at all either. Um, Did you guys grow up together? We didn't grow up together, and a lot of times we actually, we talk about if we did, if we went to the same school, if we would even be friends in high school. Um, and I think there's something interesting about that too, just kind of life and where it leads you and, and how sometimes things about you can change and morph into a person that then would kind of mesh well with somebody else later and that's really interesting i just um, had a vision of like the breakfast club like no we met after high school and it was really just through mutual friends but i think that uh, we were aware of each other in columbus ohio where we're from and and i think that that was kind of a, the the building we had kind of like a uh a, a distant respect for each other musically and um, how early did you get started with music well i started playing music in middle school, I think. Uh, but I started playing the trumpet. It was my first instrument. So you were like in the orchestra or something? Not the orchestra. I was in my, my high school's band. Marching band or like? Uh, sort of. My band, my school didn't have a marching band um, because I graduated with like 40 kids. So it was like a really small um, private school. But I, I did my best. Um, so you're like a bando, a total band kid, band camp. Like, were you... Were you the cool kid, or were you kind of nerdy? Uh, I was definitely, I was definitely the cool kid for sure, uh, but a cool nerd, I guess. Yeah. Um, were you do, doing the hair back then too? Like, uh, the, actually, the funny thing about the school that I went to is, I was not allowed. It was very, um, it was very militant, and I had to wear a uniform to school. And um, my senior year of high school, my my principal came up to me and he said. Uh, the very first day, he didn't even say hi or anything. He said, you got to get a haircut. And um, he said, you can do the rock and roll thing. Now I'm thinking of Beastie Boys, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that's what it was like. And so, yeah, he, he said I could do the rock and roll thing after high school. And a couple years after that, um, I was playing in a band. And I ran into him at the airport. And we are I think the band that I was playing in was going overseas to play a festival thing. And, what are you doing? And I said, well, I'm doing the rock and roll thing like you, like you told me to do after. So that was kind of like one of my favorite moments. Did you prove him right or did you prove him wrong or did you like follow your dreams? Like what, what was that? Why did it make you feel good? It's a good question. I think that, uh, I think that I've always been kind of, I've kind of always had like a respectful rebellion, <laughs> I guess. Like I think I'm too nice of a kid to be full on um, rebellious. But I've like wanted to. I think that's like, like, inside. I wanna, I wanna rebel like all the way. But, but I, but I can't. So I, I don't know. I think in a way, I felt really good because, uh, I think that he was. He he was telling me to do something that I didn't really understand or agree with, um, and it, and it had to do with, um, how I looked or my, my style and the way that I express myself. And I wasn't okay with that. Um, and a lot of times, sometimes that would just force me to want to go the other direction. I think a lot of people probably relate to that. Why weren't you okay with that? I mean, it's obvious, you know, you judge a book by a cover, it's wrong, you know? But what, what was it inside you that you think fueled your fire? Well, there's a lot of things in life, I feel like we're sort of supposed to do. Um, like what? Like go to school, you're graduate high school, and go to go to college. Were you supposed to be a lawyer or something, or maybe I was supposed to? <laughs> I, I I don't know. I think um, yeah, I, I think people look at our lives as kind of this trajectory that that there is kind of like a a certain thing that you're supposed to do. Um, and with that, a certain way that you're supposed to look. 
but there's, I think that there's a lot of people who disagree with that. Is it okay for someone to be, you know, a respectful rebel and not look this way? I mean, what's, what's your message to them? Definitely. Um, I'm, I'm, I don't think that I'm a standard of how somebody should look either. And I, I think that that's the cool thing is that we can, we can look however we want. Is there like a rock band store where like you go to shop for like these awesome like skin tight leather pants or like is there a place on the internet that exists it's like it's like maybe even private access you like have to prove like you're legit where you can order this stuff is there a place that exists like that there should be there should be but half the fun is just picking it out somewhere somewhere random uh, how do you what how do you describe your style beyond respectful rebel Respect. I think I think that we came up with that today, and I like yeah. that. I'm gonna totally screen like freeze frame that, and then like underneath it's gonna say Josh Town respectful ref. With this gonna, smile. Yeah, <laughs> that's that gonna be the smile. thumbnail. Yeah, it's gonna be so um, good. Can't wait. Yeah, I can't wait either. How would I describe? Um, well, I've always loved music, and we talked about skateboarding earlier too, and um, I think that sometimes those things go hand in hand. And I guess that I looked at my friends around the time that I started doing both of those things, which was around the same time, middle school, and kind of just emulated what they were doing in a way and then kind of tried to turn that into my own thing or uh, expound upon that. And um, I think that I, I'm, I'm more of a quiet person too, in general. And so sometimes I think that uh, I like to consider myself as a speaker through the drums, um, and I can kind of hide behind the drums uh, so that I don't have to talk as much. Um, That's interesting. So I don't do. Are people surprised when they hear you say that that you're kind of quiet, reserved? Yeah, I think so um, because I think that the one place that I that I feel really comfortable um, is sitting at a drum kit. And not that I feel like I'm even great at that. Um, I remember... You are great at that. Oh, well, thanks. I, yeah. I, I remember the first time that I, that I like really knew that I wanted to play the drums. Is I, was, I, I walked to Guitar Center every day, and I played their electric drums, and I would plug the headphones in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got all the, all the 80s drum samples. Yeah. And I didn't know how to like separate each limb. And then once I finally realized how, how I could do those and separate them and play a drum beat, that was a moment where I knew that I wasn't an amazing drummer, but I took the headphones out and turned the speaker on because I didn't care who listened at that point. Um, because that was me doing, you know, doing something, and I thought that that was such a cool concept. Do you feel the rhythm? How does that work? I mean, like I can hear rhythm in my head, I can't make it translate like to my feet, like I'm a terrible dancer. Um, I can feel the rhythm, I can feel the beat though, and I can like, I don't know how to describe it, but like, how would you describe how it works within your mind? I would say it's pretty much all feeling at first. When I, um, if, uh, if the guy in my band, Tyler, if he play, cause he plays a bunch, if he plays me like a piano thing, then I'm gonna kind of feel that and, and play a beat based off of kind of how I feel yeah. to that and then maybe hone it from there and then turn it into a little bit more like something that makes sense or a little more mathematical. But I think that um, that's the cool thing about music to me um, and has always been. It's just kind of um, the way it makes me feel when I listen to it and then kind of a, a separate but very similar way that it makes me feel when I play it. Um, so I would say it's very feeling based. Yeah. What's one of your favorite songs? Of ours? Of your own, yeah. Um, and tell me why it's your favorite. Like, do you like it because it's the most fun to play or it has special meaning or? I think, uh, yeah, my favorite one to play is probably a song called Trees. And um, it's not from our most recent album, but that one we always play last. And um, being a part of a two-person band and a drummer, um, it's kind of crazy because most drummers are kind of like stuffed in the back behind all the band members. And 
uh, I'm more in the front. Or being handed over the crowd yeah. as you play on a platform. Yeah. That Sometimes that too, and that's so cool. Yeah, and that's a that's a really fun moment. But I think that uh, I feel a little bit more. Uh, I feel a little more like I need to put on a show, I guess, and I need to I need to perform, and so the whole set is very. I try to be as energetic as possible, and um, so I, I I also try to be just completely wiped and exhausted by the time the show is over. That um, translates, by the way. I totally get that when you watch that show. It's it's incredible. Thank you. Yeah, it's um, it's also I mean, but it's also therapeutic for me. So it's not you know, but and then I think getting back to that song, um, the whole show is such a performance. But then I think that song is the one that I kind of use for myself, um, and all of them are kind of are in a way. But that one really is. And, um, and for some reason, it always feels like it's like the beginning of the show, too. It feels um, very refreshing. And I, I don't even feel like I feel like I've, I've just got like a new, a new energy. Yeah. Reminds me of one of my favorite quotes, T.S. Eliot, who said, um, we must not cease from exploration, right? Yeah. The, the way to do it is to end where you first began and to know the place for the very first time. That's what he said. The other thing that strikes me at your concerts is everyone knows every song and they're singing, you know, and um, you seem to have particularly loyal fans. Yeah. What's that about? Like, how did you do that? I don't know if that's something that I did. Um, I don't know. It, it, um, I think that what I'll say is that when we started, um, that's the tricky part in a band is is right when you kind of start and you gotta um, you can't just put a song on the radio and you can't just you can't just be like all right I think this one's good I think it's gonna be a hit and then deliver it to a radio station or whatever so for us it was kind of just about playing live and putting you know we we try to um, write songs around what it would look like live uh, and one of the first times I went over to um, Tyler's to work on music he was kind of like showing me a, an idea that he had and he was like in this moment we're gonna put a, a, a bass drum on top of you know the crowd and and that was something that we both like that that made sense to us yeah. I think and then I'm gonna jump off the top of the piano yeah yeah it was all sorts of just like what can we how what can we do to get people to go tell their friends about it or to come back to a show and um, I think that people did start to do that and you know if, if one person went and told their their brother and their their best friend and then bring somebody um, then the next time that we come back there's more people there and um, what's cool is that uh, I think that we've accumulated a, a group of people that that want to stick around and that have kind of taken the songs and make them make made them their own and um, and applied their own meaning to it which I think is really cool. So you're a businessman or you're an investor now. How have you taken some of these lessons that you've learned from, you know, building an audience and a fan base, loyal one at that, and how does that translate into now how you're doing business? Talk to people who don't know about what you're doing with Haley Williams from Paramore. Well, I, I'm working with Haley Williams from Paramore. Um, Thanks for that clarification. <laughs> <laughs> those who don't know. Uh, Haley created a, a hair dye company called Good Dye Young, and um, I think that, as we've kind of talked earlier, I think it's kind of just like, well, for somebody like me, not just for somebody like me, but somebody who I feel is a little, a little more quiet, or would, or I don't want to like, I don't want to be the, the f I hide behind my drum. So I, I, um, I think that that expression of myself from a hair dye uh, perspective is kind of like me that's me speaking in a microphone pretty much um, so I've always really thought that, that that was really cool and when it comes to investing uh, I I've also never really considered myself much of a businessman either but I do think that uh, everybody should do something that they feel that they want to do and what they love to do. Yeah, well, let me stop you short and 
remind you not to sell yourself short, right? Like, so you just walked us through how you and Tyler created this band and created this audience and built this amazing product, your music, you know, the principles are the same. Right. It's just a different product, you know? It's a, you know, it's, it's hair care product or it's whatever, it doesn't matter. The principles are still the same. It's gotta be authentic. You have gotta right. believe in it. It's gotta be great. And then you keep people coming back, right? Yeah, and I think that, I do think that shows. And um, if we were sitting here talking about uh, me investing in a startup company for ketchup, uh, I'd be a less, I'd be a lot less enthusiastic. And I think that- Why do you gotta hate on ketchup? Ketchup's great. No, I love ketchup, but I- You I, know, uh, a lot of people watch this show love ketchup. Yeah. So don't go there. I mean, I'm not one of them. I'm more of a mustard guy. Me yeah, too. For, for reals. Yeah. Um, no, I think, I think that's that's I think that's an important thing to talk about too. Though is that there is somebody out there who's very passionate about ketchup, and um, I find that fascinating. Um, how uh, everybody has something a little bit different that makes them tick, and and that's what's so cool to me, um, knowing that. I don't have to go and figure out how to make ketchup to put on my hot dog because somebody's very passionate about it already before me and has done a great job of doing it. And, uh, or at least I would hope they are because uh, I think that's when the, the best products come about. Um, so for me, I think that this is something that I've, that I've lived with for a really long time and so for that to feel so natural to move into that, um, I, I think that's that's the best scenario. So a lot of people who watch the show, they have YouTube channels, they're creating content, or they're aspiring musicians, or actors, or artists, whatnot, mathematicians. There's so much out there now, though, right? You know, when the Beebs got started, there was next to nothing on the internet, and yeah. you know he got discovered, and the rest is history, right? And, and everyone's benefited from this groundswell of the internet, um, content being so accessible, on our phones, you know, all that. So do you think that said, now is like the best time or the worst time to start something totally new? And I guess the other thing to think about too, another layer is, would it be, or is it harder for you to start something now that you are kind of established? You know, maybe you don't feel the pain as much if you lose X amount of dollars versus when you first started when you had a lot farther to fall. What do you think, easier now or was it easier back then? That's a great question. I think it depends on what it is that you're trying to start. Um, so you have this new venture. Yeah. Was it easy? Was it like, oh, let's do this, man? Or I think that as soon as um, I heard of an opportunity to work with Haley and uh, especially this company, um, it was kind of that was kind of a no-brainer to me. Um, and I think that goes along with uh, people doing what they love. And for me, it, was, uh, it wasn't anything that I needed persuaded by um, or some kind of lengthy expl explanation even of like what it is and, and how it could work. Um, <clears throat> I think that it initially really made sense because I know, that, I know that Haley's been dyeing her hair for a really long time and I've been dyeing my hair for a little while and it's and just something that started out really fun to do um, as a self-expression and it's something that I still enjoy doing. And I, I never knew, I think the first time I did, I was like, oh, this could be cool, or this would, this would be fun, or to try something different or new. And it became something that I just really enjoyed doing a lot um, and kept doing and am still doing. Um, and so I think that, that that's, for me, I guess when I say that I'm not, I've never considered myself much of a businessman, but, uh, I like to go where into things that I really enjoy doing. Yeah, um, it's a for us, by us kind of thing, right? Like, I think that it's easier now for me uh, to to be a part of something um, different or new. And the reason why is because I think that if I was, if I could go back um, six or seven years to the first time that I dyed my hair, it's been a journey in trying to figure out what's the best way to do it or the healthiest way or what kind to get. Um, and if I had somebody telling me that I looked up to, somebody saying, you should 
go and use this kind and here's why and it's it's good for your it's good for your hair and it's um all these reasons then i think that then i'd be like oh cool well i'm into it then we talked a little bit about fear um you're established you know you have a little bit of traction few people are listening to what you're doing paying attention um still what keeps you up at night like what are you afraid of there's a lot that i'm afraid of uh sharks i'm also afraid of sharks yeah i hate the ocean i love the ocean and so it kills me it's ironic right like i love it so much but i'm so i have this irrational fear like i'm gonna be i don't think it's irrational though they're pretty big and they have huge teeth right but like statistics say like you have a better chance of getting hit by a car struck by yeah. lightning or something right so it's it's a little bit illogical yes, you're right yeah but it is scary out there right it's so scary. I, I, I rarely can get in the beach because, because of sharks. Yeah. Um, so, but I don't really live like super close to a beach, so it doesn't keep me up every night, only some nights. Um, and then, I don't know, I, I think the idea of, even the idea of success, um, and it's interesting, and I think that my band over the past, really the past year has been crazy, the past year and a half or two years, um, and a lot of people will come to us and say, congratulations on your success, and it's great, and, um, and it's a very positive thing. But at the same time, at that moment when somebody says that, I also kind of feel like that's the, that, the, in that moment is when I need to do something else and, and push forward whatever, you know, whatever that success was, it's in the past now. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. I've talked to so many really successful people and they've said the exact same thing. It's like as soon as they hear the compliments coming, they think, uh-oh. Yeah, yeah. Someone's nipping right at my heels. Yeah. Whether it's my competitor or my own complacency or my own ego, it, they, it's like that's the panic moment. Oh, no. I also just realized how... Uh, how ADD I am, and um, I, I I get on Spotify and I listen to music. I, I it's it's great how much music is on there and how easy it is to discover music. But at the same time, I realize that there's an ocean of music on there, and um, it's it's crazy that any band would come out higher up than another band or more successful. Because um, I every day I listen to so many good artists that I'm just, you know, it's, it feels overwhelming sometimes. And so it is kind of like, well, what happens next? And what do we do next? And how, you know, how can, and now that this tour that we just did is done now, how do we do a better one in the future? Um, and sometimes I wish that I was in this situation, but I was like 80 years old. So it's like, okay, cool. I can kind of like take a rest and be done. Uh, but yeah, I think that just the idea of continuing to carry on and, and out to yourself every day, um, whether it's your job or your or your hobbies or if you know whatever your your other goals are, um, just trying to sort of do better than you did yesterday. <laughs>